And a very good morning to you. Welcome back. It is Friday morning. Rima Brecky, Mick Wright with you in the chair through until night. It is great to have your company. And we've been uh, promising this one all week. A very, very special guest in the studios with us this morning. All the way from uh, from the Big Smoke in Sydney, from Hillsong Church, Pastor Robert Ferguson is joining us live in the studio. Robert, welcome. Thank you very much. It's wonderful to be here and yeah. talk to all your listeners. Great to have you on board. Now, first time you've been with us as well, so this is a bit of a coup for us being able to pull this one off. We know that you are an insanely busy man. You've got a whole lost list of things happening. I mean, obviously, you're one of the key team down at Hillsong. 30 years on staff, over 30 years now on staff. Uh, you're a, a preacher, a teacher, and, and a dad, a husband, a grandfather, all that kind of thing, So, uh, and an author as well. And an author, yes. I like to say that my life is full rather than busy, but that's just a choice. <laughs> yeah, look, that is definitely definitely on the cards there for sure. Now, we wanted to talk uh, this morning about a brand new book that you've uh, you've got coming out today. As a matter of fact, today is the official launch date. It's called Jesus End. But before we jump into that, uh, can you just give us a little bit of a, uh, a listeners, a little bit of a background into the Rob Ferguson story? Well, as you can probably tell, I have an English accent, originally from England, and I was invited to come to Australia in 1990, just for two years, a two-year contract. So here we are 33 years wow. later, so it didn't go quite according to plan. <laughs> so I say that I'm English by birth, but Australian by choice. And uh, I've been in the ministry for nearly 50 years, 49 years. So Goodness. next year is my jubilee year, 50 years since my first sermon, 50 years since I became a Christian, and coincidentally, 50 years since I met my wife. So big year next year. You should have invited me next year. Hey, we'll, we'll bring you up next year. Don't worry about that. that that's <laughs> definitely on the cards now that we know you, now that we've had you in the studio, that we'll, we'll, we'll make sure we roll out the red carpet for sure. And that, and, and I mean, with the number 50, it's jubilee all around, really, isn't it? Absolutely. You've hit the real purple patch, I would, I would imagine, saying. Now, of course, uh, with, uh, you know, with your, over those 50 years in ministry, you would have seen a lot of changes in the church. What are some of the, uh, what are some of probably the biggest ones that you've noticed? Look, it's almost impossible to describe in detail. I sure. say to my grandchildren who are helping me with my computer, I say when I was at university, I'd never even seen a computer. So just the whole media, social media especially, has made a massive difference. Right. All my early sermons, thankfully, were never recorded. <laughs> so you can't see all the mistakes and the difficulties I went through. But I think the social media, the idea of being accessible, yep. not just in Australia but around the world totally. all the time, is a very, very different dynamic. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, really, I mean, there are still plenty of people out there putting boots on the ground and they're going into the unreached areas. But, we, you know, these days with technology, as you say, Anywhere that there is internet connection, you can be there. Exactly. And that puts actually greater pressure on the individual and greater pressure on, on ministers. Sure. Because you're, you're always, your calling is always 24-7, but social media and the connectivity makes yeah. it even more pressured. And I think then you have to be that much more intentional. Yeah. What is it that you want to achieve? How is it that you want to help? What is it yeah. that you want to do? Yeah, because I guess the whole dynamic of discipleship has shifted too uh, hugely. Um, before, I guess, it, you know, if you look at the, the model that Jesus had for us, it, he took 12 guys, all very different backgrounds and, and experiences, and, and lived with them for a period of like three years for his earthly ministry. Today, though, in the church, when we're discipling, we can be discipling, I guess, people now. I mean, it was always the way you had a circle of people around you physically. But uh, these days, I mean, Zoom, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, there's all kinds of platforms out there where you can actually be, be discipling a whole myriad of people. Yes. Look, to be honest, I mean, there are pros and cons. Mm -hmm. Last night, I was speaking to Perth at 10 o'clock. Last night, the night before, I was speaking to Stockholm. So that's the, that's the pros. But I think somehow we need to get back to the original discipleship program, hanging out with people, genuinely journeying yeah. with them, sharing our life with them, because ultimately that's the way we learn. That's the way we 
teach people. So my heart is to spend more time yep. with people. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, being in that close proximity together um, in discipleship, what are some of the, I guess, the key things that you've seen over the years that really help, I guess, people to grow you know, in their relationship with God, in their relationship with other people in that context? Well, our journey with Christ is long-term. God plays the long game. Yeah. So we are over a period of time being conformed into his image. But you know, as well as I do, that is a whole lot of ups and downs, a whole lot of challenges, difficulties, hopes and dreams And there's a mystery associated with it. That's why I use the word journey. I think journey is a good word. Mm -hmm. We need to journey with people. I remember many years ago, I was invited to speak in Orange. And I just invited one of my students to come with me. So it's a four-hour journey. I spoke, and then I drove four hours back. So I had eight hours with this student just on a journey, chatting about life and how you do it. And he said afterwards, that time together changed my life. Wow. And yet, when you look at it, I didn't say anything radical. I was talking about cricket. I was talking about parenting, <laughs> as, you I was, as you do, uh, talking about all sorts. Yeah. But there was something about journeying together mm-hmm. that changed his life. And when you look at Jesus, we, if we read between the lines, it says he walked with his disciples from Galilee to Jerusalem. That's a week's walk. Yeah. Just talking, chatting, hanging out, lives change in that context. Yeah, absolutely. We are joined by a very special guest, Pastor Rob Ferguson from Hillsong Church. And live in the studios this morning, we'll take a quick break and we'll be back right after this. Welcome back. It is Rima Brecky on your Friday morning. Good to have your company. Joined by a very, very special guest this morning, Pastor Rob Ferguson from Hillsong Church is in the chair with us having a bit of a chat now. Rob, of course, you've just released a brand new book. Today is the official launch date of the book. It is called Jesus And. Uh, and I think it's one of those titles that's very intriguing to me personally, being having a very theological uh, theologian's type of mind. I'm like, hmm, okay, what's he going to say here is it with this? Which direction? And, and I love the direction that you've gone with this book. And firstly, can you just give us a little bit of the, um, I guess, the background on the inspiration behind it? Yes. Well, Jesus and was made to make you think <laughs> because, of course, Jesus is self-sufficient. He doesn't need an and, as I say in the book. But what my heart is, is that it's Jesus and people. Mm -hmm. How God works through ordinary people, broken people, flawed people, like you and me, like all the listeners. How is it that God in his sovereignty and grace works with people? So that's the basis of the book. And it was inspired actually through a sermon, maybe 30, 40 years ago, I was listening to a sermon in England And a man in the middle of his sermon said, God's method is a person, and you can be that person. Wow. And those two statements just radically shifted the way I did things. Yeah. Firstly, that God uses people. And secondly, I could possibly be one of those people. Yeah. And that really became part of my mantra. And I talked to the preacher later, and I realized that that was his mantra, and he he talked to me about how that had affected him mm-hmm. and honestly it changed the way I did life. Wow. God wants to use you. Yeah, come on. I, I was actually reading earlier in the week um, a very famous quote by John Stott. Yeah, We all know who John Stott is, hugely famous guy at home with the Lord now. But he, he said he had a quote and it said something like this. He said, if the 16th century recovered the priesthood of all believers, so in other words, In other words, you know, every Christian kind of enjoying through Christ uh, direct access to God. Um, Perhaps the 20th century will recover the ministry of all believers, uh, where every Christian receives from Christ a privileged ministry to men. Um, So is this something that you are sensing in the church these days? There is that shift, and obviously a lot of the book has that element to it too. Yeah, I think it's always been in the heart of God. If you read through the Scriptures... God strangely uses people. I use the illustration on the Damascus Road. God radically changed Saul. Yeah. 
He could have just spoken to him directly, given him an assignment, told him what to do. Right. But he didn't. He sent him to Straight Street in Damascus and said, go and meet a man by the name of Ananias and he will tell you what I have assigned you to do. Mm -hmm. So the question is, why the middleman? <laughs> yes. Why the extra person? Yeah. Because God wanted to use Saul, but he also wanted to use Ananias. And he does this all the way through. Yeah. The story. So I don't think he's really changed his methodology. The church has changed its emphases. Right. But the reality is he always wants to use ordinary people. Yep, absolutely. Now the the I guess the the basis of the book really comes out of the Gospel of Luke. And so what was it about Luke's gospel that really drew you when you were like, Ah oh, yeah, I can I've really got something burning in my heart from God about this one? Look, I've always loved the book of Luke. Mm -hmm. If if I were to recommend two books in the Bible to, let's say, a new, a new believer, a new follower of Christ, I'd always recommend the book of Luke and the book of Acts. So the story of Jesus and the story of the early church. Sure. But I like Luke's approach. I'm a scientist yep. and I'm also a historian. And I like looking at things reasonably and rationally and in detail, and that's what Luke does. He's going around. He wasn't a first-hand witness of Christ, but he travelled with Paul, and he clearly, as he says in the introduction both to Luke and to Acts, he's wanting to find out what really happened. Yeah. For instance, he's the only one that talks about Mary and the birth of Jesus. So it seems that he actually travelled to Ephesus yep. and hung out with Mary to get some information. And I love that approach. He's 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 trying to find out what's going on. Yeah. Uh, I like his curiosity. I like his scientific mind, his historical mind. So the book is based around uh, the 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 Gospel of Luke, but specifically Jesus and different people in that gospel yeah absolutely do you think it's all like I, I guess in a lot of church circle these days you know there has been a, I think a real uh, a rediscovery of you know what we would call identity in Christ and just the fact that hey I'm you know I'm a son slash daughter of God I'm loved unconditionally by him and he actually wants to use me in his story you know like God's story for between him and mankind I mean uh, we may have some listeners this morning who could be really struggling along that journey thinking, okay, where do I fit with this God? Like, what does that look like? Could you maybe give us some keys this morning about how people could, I guess, um, maybe engage more, you know, on the journey? Well, look, I think you're absolutely right. People are desperate for mm -hmm. finding their identity, finding that purpose. And that's why, in a sense, I wrote the book because someone like Anna in the book is just a normal woman living in Jerusalem, a faithful believer going to the temple, and God has included her yep. in his story. Mm -hmm. If you think of God having a huge story, we are finding our subplot in God's divine story. Yeah. And I love that. God is always the hero, but in any good movie, in any good book, where there is a hero, there are minor characters who take the story forward. Yeah. Anna is one of those minor characters. The centurion is one of those minor characters, and they take the story of God forward. And God is inviting us yeah. to be a minor character in his story, mm. to take his story forward, and to feel we're part of the movie. We're part of the story. We're part of the, the grand narrative. And what a sense of purpose and identity that gives us. Right, yeah, I'm. That is, that just hits in all the right places this morning. I have to say. Now the book is called Jesus, and it is the latest one from Pastor Rob Ferguson. And uh, guys, I've been reading it at home. I know one or two of the other people here in the studios have been. We love it, and uh, and you guys will too as well. Particularly if you are, uh, I guess, one of those people. You're on the journey of, okay, God, where am I going with this thing? How are we working together? You know, I guess fulfilling the great commission. You know the mission with God and ourselves, it is. Uh, it will be a, a real, I think, a real life imparter, absolutely. Uh, you'll be able to listen to, uh, to to Rob here on the studio as well because we will be continuing uh, a chat with him, myself and Janelle Knox uh, with uh, with Pastor Rob on the Rima podcast. So we'll let you guys know when that will be up live on, on air. So uh, make sure you stay tuned. And again, 
First time here this morning, Rob, it has been such an honour to have you in the studio, mate. Super appreciate you taking the time out of your day, and uh, we're going to do this again. Okay, well, thank you very much, Mick. I really appreciate it. No worries at all. This is Rima Brecky on your Friday morning. We'll be right back after this.